raise the table up or use the roof. Let's get a slightly better angle, shall we? Oh, it's, oh okay, that's better. That's so much better. Okay. Hello, my fishes. Courtney Mermaid here, and welcome back to my channel. We're going to be shaking things up today. Usually I post my finished mermaid tail creations in sort of a portfolio style with like soft music in the background. And I thought it would be far more interesting if I actually had some FaceTime with you guys, talked about the design process, some of the things that went into the tails themselves, um, and then gave you some cool slow-mo as a nice little bit of B-roll. So is it warm in here or is it just me? I think it's too warm. I think I need to lose a layer. This is just insane. It's too hot. I'm too hot. <laughs> All right, so in terms of the design, both of these tails actually feature the classic scale that I offer. So this is the scale shape that is just part of the design. I can actually do custom scales if you are interested, but if you would just like to stick with the scale pattern, this is my new, it's my new and improved, evolved <laughs> scale shape and and style, which I quite, I quite like. It's got a lot of detail still in it. It's a little bit more polished, I think, than how I've been doing them previously, while still having that really good sense of realism, I think. So all of my tails do feature uh, an open, I do have an option to not do this if you would prefer to have a closed uh, bottom with a zipper, that is an option as well. But all of my flukes are open, so you can actually uh, see the monofin in there. It, I like it like this for drainage reasons. I find it a lot less frustrating when your tail isn't filling with, with all kinds of things. And I do actually uh, hand do the pattern on all of my flukes. I don't really reuse things at all except for the scales, but for the most part everything is done 100% unique for the tails, uh, each tail that comes at me. So this one, like this exact pattern that you see across the bottom here is not the same pattern that is obviously across the bottom of this tail. So this was a lot of fun because it actually features some extra striping and it also we did uh, the cut fringe on this one as well. It is optional, like you can let me know. Um, it's very much a back and forth process. We have uh, our own private little messenger system that, that I use to, to be in touch with my clients. So you guys are kind of taken along the process step by step, each decision we make together. And so for this one, we decided not to do um, not to do the fringe on the base, keep it nice and simple, you know, just nice and nice and classic. Things that, that are always really interesting when a client comes to you and wants uh, stripes of any kind. If you're a tail maker, you will relate to this, especially if you're a fabric tail maker, so hard that it hurts. Lining up stripes, you guys, is a process. Um, it came out near perfect on this tail. There's a few spots where it's just a tiny little, like a, we're talking millimeters off here. Um, but for the most part, it's almost exact on every single little, little stripe. But it takes a huge number of pins to make that possible, like a huge number. I go in, every single stripe gets a pin stuck in at the top of the stripe and at the bottom of the stripe to make sure that they're gonna line up as close as humanly possible. There's just some things with the sewing machine that you can't, you can't help, what are you gonna do? We also have the nice stripes on the fins as well, which I really liked. These fins were fun to do. These fins were a lot of fun to do. The shape is definitely different than any fins I've done so far. And I really like, so we've got like the matching little finnies at the bottom, super, super cute. And then this tail uh, features a different back. Um, as well, so it has it has a different design on the back, which is quite fun. And I do like when we do stripes that start off one way and kind of fade, fade out and then fade back into. This was the client's idea. I loved this. I thought this was just too fun. This one had a bit of sparkle. We didn't absolutely overdo it with the sparkle. I think we got a little bit more sparkle on the front. Um, just to keep it a little bit like, because that's more like the twinkly, softer areas. And then we chose to go a little bit darker. Um, on the back as well, which is something I do like to do. Now, another option that I do offer on um, in the shop is that you can get the same front and the same back. So that will save you a little bit as I'm only doing one design that then goes on the front and on the back. Things that I like to think about though is I try to keep everything very level <laughs> when we do this so that that way it's not gonna be like a big dip down the front, which will look fine on the front, but it might not look as good on the back because the shape usually your bum comes up like this and then your tongue kind of comes kind of comes down a little bit so that can be an interesting thing and then and it's a little bit of extra thinking to go uh, to create something that's going to look good on the back as well as the front so in some instances it's great like if you have a very symmetrical design and you're thinking you know what this is this is what i want front and back no problem saves a little bit of time saves saves a little bit of money 
and it, it just creates a different a different vibe overall so you know but again I have the option to do uh, a different a different front and a different back as well so there's that now I have had a few of you ask me well Courtney do you do dorsal fins and yes I absolutely do do dorsal fins and since you've all been asking so nicely while I still have the tail here, let's show you guys a quick sneak peek at the siren tail that I've currently, uh, that I've just finished from Mermaid Kim. And you can take a look at the dorsal fin on that and we can talk about a few things. So to answer the first really big question is, Courtney, do you make tail skins for the Mer Taylor tails? Uh, no, I do not offer them in my shop. So this is a, sp a special circumstance. This is for my sister. So this isn't like, you know what I mean? It's a very special uh, situation where I, I chose to make another tail for this monofin. I personally don't actually like ta making tail skins for this monofin. It's a little bit of a frustration when you're working with something so floppy. But let's take a look at the dorsal fin on this. I'll do a full video on this tail because there's so many things to unpack on this tail. But for now, we're just going to look at the dorsal. So. Here is the dorsal on uh, this fin. We also have two side fins on either side, but that's the dorsal. So I do my dorsal fins differently than other tail makers. Uh, typically speaking, other tail makers will actually cut into the fabric all the way down and then sew it in. That's how I used to do it a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away when I was still using vinyl for my dorsal fins. That being said, I've discovered that it actually over time compromises the integrity of the tail, especially if you're somebody who is a little bit more grabby with your tails and a little bit rougher on your mermaid tails. So I find that that just sewing it actually to the tail like you would uh, any other kind of pec fin or body fin as I like to call them is the best way to do it. Now that does mean that your dorsal is inclined to lay naturally to one side and I like to think of it if you're a horse person at all I like to think of it kind of like a horse's mane and how it will just naturally fall well in most cases <laughs> horse humor right there, right? It'll naturally fall to one side. So naturally when you sit down, it's gonna fold nicely under your bum. It's gonna be a non-issue just like so, right? And it does still actually sit up when you're wearing it. It'll still pop up and it'll still do its thing. You can see here, it's got a nice little, that's just chilling, you know what I mean? But it, do, it will have just a natural kind of inclination into, into one direction. And frankly, I find it a little bit more comfortable because you don't have a big knob than, than going down the, in, the interior of your tail. It's just a nice seam, just like any of your other body fins. Very simple and a little bit more comfortable. And just, it makes a little bit more sense in my opinion, because the more that you cut into the tail, the more that you're just asking for more tears and more issues, right? So to avoid that, and it also means that you're never going to have a spot where your scales don't line up. This is just a pet peeve of mine personally, especially with larger scales. When tail makers will cut into the body of the tail, of course, you're going to lose um, sort of half an inch, depending on what your, your seam allowance is, but about half an inch on either side. And so that means there's going to be a couple of scales that will, instead of being like a nice shape, they'll like overlap funny now because well, you cut into the fabric, so you've got to sew it up because you can't like, how do you account for that, right? You would have to really pay attention. So my solution to that has been to just sew it straight to the surface of the tail. And it's been working well for me so far. So I like that. That's enough on this tail. We'll film a video with this one. With just uh, subscribe, okay? Hit the bell. And then uh, when it happens, you'll know. Okay, so that has been a detailed look at two of my new client mermaid tails. If you guys are interested in learning how to make tails like these, I do have two different ebooks available over at shopvancouvermermaid.com. One that features the basic tail making process for the printed uh, fabric tail as like this one, for example. And then if you are interested in learning how to make yourself additional fins, I have an ebook specifically dedicated to that as well. So I will be sure to leave links to all of that in the description box down below. And if you're interested in one of my mermaid tails specifically, you can visit me at VancouverMermaid.com. All of the information, pricing, add-ons, all of the things that you will want to know will be up there, including my frequently asked questions page, all of the things. So I will leave that in the description box down below as well. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you like this format or if you prefer to see them still the portfolio style or if both was just 
you know, right on. And yeah, thank you again for watching and I look forward to catching you all again in my next video. Happy swimming, bye.